Hey, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial from PH Studios. This is from the Space Shooter tutorial series. Last tutorial, we discussed a ship class and we almost have a complete. All we have left to do is a collision. And we need to do that after we finish the player, the bullet, and the enemy classes. So until that's finished, we cannot do this collision. Okay, so in this tutorial, we need to create the bullet class. So you want to right click gameplay object go to add class and let's call it bullet.cs capital B and now this is going to be a public class and it's going to be a derivative of gameplay object now the bullet class is going to it's basically just going to determine what velocity it needs to travel by and it does that by using the ship as a source the bullet needs to know who fired me who do I belong to so do I belong to the player or one of the thousand enemies that are up above the player so we do that by having a ship field and we call that by source and now that's a private so we need a public ship capital source and that needs to be git only we only set it in the constructor git return source okay so that is it for the fields and properties you can make your own you can build upon this as much as you want but for the tutorial, this is it for the properties and fields. So now all we need to do is a, a constructor. So public public ship or public bullet opening in parentheses and it's a ship source. And if you're not that familiar with C sharp or Java, if you have a field that's the same name as a parameter we need to identify which one's which and to do that to get to the field we use this dot the field is equal to the parameter so this dot this dot source refers to the field and just source refers to the parameter now we need to do initialize and initialize is built into the gameplay object class so if we go into the initialization methods you see we can override since it's virtual we can override the initial method initialize method so we go underneath the constructor public override and initialize now if you're not that familiar with the gameplay object or anything, you grab a file off the internet and you can make a derivative of that and it has several methods you can override. If you're not that familiar with it, you can go inside of the parent class, which is gameplay object, and look at its method. If it has code in it, you might as if it has code of it that you need, you want to call base.initialize or base dot whatever the method is. And depending on the code in there you might want to call it before the code you enter you might want to call it after the code you enter in this case it doesn't really matter since it doesn't matter if it's active before or after our code in here so I'll code above it so what we want to do inside the initialize is to determine the position the velocity and I'll all that stuff all inside here before we begin I'm duplicating the code that was released a year and a half ago and we just have a static texture of the enemy and that texture is that red enemy that we saw in the previous tutorials where we brought the enemies brought the sprites in we saw that the enemy was that red ship that you saw so that there's no more enemies but that one so for this tutorial we're gonna have a static 
ship texture for the enemy and the static ship texture for the bullet and static texture for the planner sprite so all the sprites we have are static there's no we will not randomize well, this bullet will be this texture this bullet would be a different texture this player is this texture this player will be a different texture and so on it's all static so what we're going to do is we're going to create a public static texture 2d and add using Microsoft the next native framework graphics so public static texture 2d and we're going to call it bullet texture and this just holds our bullet texture and we do this so we do not have to go into the hard drive and load it every time we want to create a new bullet this way it's inside of memory and we just make a reference to it inside of our current bullet object so bullet is a derivative of gameplay object which contains a texture field and property in there already so we set texture is equal to bullet texture now for color we just set color is equal to color dot white for now Later on, when we do the player and enemy sprites or enemy classes, we need to modify this and do whatever we want to do. Unless you want to keep it the same color. In the sample, I modified that the enemy's bullet is red and the player's bullet is blue. If you just want to have it the same color, you do not need to worry about modifying this. But I will discuss it later on. So now what we need to do is we need to get the position and the position is built into the game plan object class. So position is equal to new vector2 and you can delete the Microsoft the next night framework dot and just add the using that way it's cleaner and we want to add the position of our source texture the top left of that texture. So source dot position dot x minus source dot origin dot x what that does is if you go into the gameplay object this makes it object oriented this way if we have an origin if we go into the graphics data as you can see we have an origin that refers to the center of our texture now the origin can be anywhere we want. So this is an object-oriented way to grab in the texture. This way it goes to the top left of the of the sprite of the texture. Comma source dot position dot y minus source dot origin dot y. This goes to the top of the texture. So now we're looking at the top left of the texture of our source. So now what if you want to go to the top center? So you want it centered horizontally but you want to go to the top of the texture. Now we do not 